opening of the territory of New Mexico, a flood of pioneers swept westward to claim the fertile lands. Then, with the discovery of gold, another breed descended upon mining camp and frontier town alike, prey upon their more industrious and honest neighbors. With the end of the war between the states, this lawless element burst into action. In an effort to claim the new territory for their own, they fought against the encroachment of law and communications. I get out there, I'm going to apply for that job as freight agent. How do you do, men? My daughter and I welcome you to Pioneer Telegraph. Before we are through, our lines will reach from St. Joe to the Pacific. But the job won't be an easy one. And there will be places along the route where the only law will be the law of the six gun. Now, there's only one way to lick this job, to work together as a team doing a good job under a good leader. That's why I've asked you to come here, to meet our new engineer, Mr. Ken Mason. He gets in from the east this morning. Here's the stage now, Dad. That can't be him. Must be. He's the only passenger. Mr. White? I'm Ken Mason. I believe you were expecting me. I wasn't expecting fine gentlemen. Maybe there's been a mistake. There's no mistake, Mr. White. Stringing telegraph lines for job, Mr. Mason. If you have. I anticipate no unusual problems. Miss, uh... My daughter, Rita. She's my assistant. Delighted. Mr. Mason, if the line is not completed by November 15th, we lose our franchise. If you have any doubts as to your ability to meet that date, now is the time to bow out. And break our contract? <laughs> I wouldn't think of it, Miss White. Very well, Mason. Here's your crew. There's a wagon train waiting at Haddon Stables to transport men and supplies to a base camp in Echo Canyon near the town of Twin Bluffs. Dad and I have several business matters to settle. We'll meet you there. Good. I'll see you at Echo Canyon. All right, men. Let's go. Well, what do you think of it? Same as you do. We'll be needing a new engineer before the job's half done. Interesting. Pioneer Telegraph is moving out this way with a work crew. When? Well, they've already left St. Joe, heading for a work camp in Echo Canyon. How many of them? I judge about 50, not including the old man and the girl. They're going to follow the wagon train. The job's being handled by some eastern dude named Ken Mason. <laughs> You'll be easy pickings. You've got some bad habits, Kilgore. One of them is jumping to conclusions. Up to now, there's been no law on Twin Bluffs except me. So you and the James Gang and the Daltons have been free to come and go as you please, knowing you're safe while you're here. That's right, as long as we paid you your price. Anybody tired of paying it? Well, take it easy, Crane. We're not fools. You keep the law out of Twin Bluffs and you'll be well paid. All right. 
Now let's talk about the telegraph. That would have a United States Marshal in town in a hurry. Sure. If they run their line here, which I don't think they will, them Indian raids we stirred up run the settlers off the land Pioneer Telegraph needs to string their lines over. So, they either give up or go someplace else. Still, it wouldn't do any harm to sort of discourage White and his daughter personally. What do you mean? Right out to Yellow Hawk's camp. Tell him. Hey, Hodge. Mr. White and his daughter showing up yet? Haven't seen him, Mr. Mason. Certainly hope nothing's happened to him. Can I cut across to the main road through those hills? Yeah, go right up the canyon. Keep bearing to your right. I think I'll ride out. Maybe I'll meet him. What's the matter? Scared? Well, I'll be glad to get to camp. This is Indian country, and after all those awful reports from Mr. Matthews about conditions around Twin Bluff... Matthews is an old fuddy-duddy. Sad. That was good luck, Charlie. Still fighting the war. That old relic didn't... Scared up. Just what I expected he would do. you go to? If it hadn't been for the cavalry, we'd all been shot. You? The fright, Miss White. Well, if anything should happen to Dad, I'll... Hurry, Mr. Mason, we... I'm terribly sorry, Miss White. Oh, Dad! changes things, doesn't it? I'll escort you back to St. Joe if you wish. The work will go on just as Dad planned. I'm glad. Miss White, maybe you can explain something that puzzles me. That attack, did anyone in this area know when we would get here? Only Tim Matthews, our advance agent in Twin Bluffs. 
Then we'd better ride in and have a talk with him. I'm glad you said that. Let's go. Here, that's strange. Let me try, Miss White. Looks like Matthews hasn't been here for some time. Not for two weeks, according to that wall calendar. Somebody in town will be able to explain Matthew's absence. Of course, George Crane. Who's he? One of Twin Bluff's few decent citizens. He's been helping Matthew's line up land purchases for our right of way. Sounds like he's our man. Let's go. Has your father never received my letter regarding Matthew's disappearance? No. And it must have been on one of the stages the Redskins got. Do you have any idea why the Indians are on the warpath against the telegraph? Well, perhaps they think you're going to steal their land, Mr. Mason. Then they're wrong. We aren't planning on using Indian territory, and we intend to purchase our land legally from its present owners. Well, there's the pinch. I'm afraid you won't be able to contact any of the present owners. Those the Redskins haven't killed off left. Some to Mexico, others have gone east and can't be located. That's what I wrote your father about. That and Matthews. Wanted to save you this trip. Without land rights, your line can't go through. The line will go through, Mr. Crane. Many people have risked their life savings to finance this line because they had confidence in Dad and me and believed we wouldn't be quitters. I'm not going to let them down, though. But you have no route. Mr. Mason has an emergency route to use as an alternate, using public lands, not Indian. We'll substitute that. Well, I admire your spunk, Miss Rita. If I can help, call on me. Thanks. I guess I'd better get back to camp. I'll check up on our supplies at the freight office and join you later. So long, Mr. Crane. Goodbye, Mr. Mason. Miss White. Goodbye. I overheard that gal means business. So do I. Go get Yellowhawk and his tribe to pay a little visit to that camp. Tell him to destroy. I'm glad to see you. I came as soon as I could. It is good to be together again. It's been a long time, Moccasin. This cave holds many memories. My grandfather's sword. Even that horse looks familiar. Surely it couldn't be Firebrand. <laughs> No, it's descended from Firebrand. Just like you are descended from the great and noble Don Diego Vega. He would be proud to see his grandson ride in defense of his homeland. That's why I've come back, Moccasin. To avenge the murders of innocent people. Find the renegades who wrecked my home. And mine. Who are they? There are many bandits here. I wrote you all I know. There's only one thing I kept from you. What's that? 
Your grandfather, Don Diego, wore this to become known and feared among bandits as Zorro. And your grandfather helped him. It was he who saddled Firebrand in this cave each time it was necessary for Zorro to ride. In that stall stands another Firebrand, ready for you. I'll ride as my grandfather rode. I'll become the living ghost of Zorro and drive these renegades from the land. We'll work together, Moccasin, just as our grandfathers did. Wait here until Zorro needs you. Buena suerte, amigo. Good luck. Adios, Moccasin. Indians are riding towards our base camp. The same band that killed Mr. White. They're out to make more trouble. Quickly, saddle firebrand. Indians! Indians! Get your rifles, men! Thank <laughs> you. 